then marry those that please you of other women, two or three or four. But if you fear that you will not be just, then marry only one. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're listening to the Naqabi Dari series, Polygyny Talks. What follows is a sister's account of her experience with polygyny. Due to the nature and sensitivity of the topic, some sisters have chosen to remain anonymous. This series was put together in a humble attempt to gain a better understanding of the relevance of polygyny in our times and how it is practiced. Please be respectful in your comments. Finally, I thank all the sisters who have taken part by sharing their stories. May Allah bless you and your families with an abundance of khair in this world and the next. And may Allah accept from us. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Polygyny Talks. Alhamdulillah, we have with us Sister Rabia today and inshallah she's going to share her experiences of polygyny inshallah. So sister, could you, um, you know, give us a small background introduction about yourself and tell us how do you get to be in polygyny? Okay. Um, alhamdulillah. Um, um, my name is Rabia. I'm an Nigerian. So actually, I became the part of a polygamous family just last year in December. So let me say we are eight months gone now, alhamdulillah. So I think that is a brief introduction. So when we get into discussion, I could be able to say more things, inshallah. Yes, okay, inshallah. So I wanted to ask if... Um, if, like it's polygyny is it something that's done commonly in your cultural background you know is this something the norm for you guys like how did you you know how did you kind of find like was it easy for you to get into it or accept being in it okay actually polygamy is a normal thing in my country then in my in our tradition it is a normal thing so from the point of culture it is normal from the point of um religion it is a, it's a practice that it is widely accepted by the, the community, the Muslim, the Muslim community in Nigeria. So it's a norm. It's a norm. But then it's not, so it's not as easy as that, like for the women flocks to just find it easy to conceive and accept it as if nothing has just happened. But I think it's a, it's a normal thing in the society. Okay, so would you say that it's practiced with general success? I mean, have you seen good examples of it? And have you had any, like, for example, I speak to some sisters sometimes and they say they grew up in polygyny and, you know, it wasn't something which they found like was good for them or benefited them. And as children, especially, you know, they feel that maybe they've suffered or, you know, they've not had fair treatment. Okay, for instance, for me, I wasn't brought up in a polygamous fam family. I don't even know how the setting works. Um, I just know that in the society, it is, it is being practiced, but I was never actively involved, maybe through my family. My dad, my dad, my dad only has my mom. So, but from what I've seen in the society, um, it's a very difficult um, family setting. It comes with lots of challenges. And to be frank with you, most polygamous story and what we've seen around, they are not encouraging. They are filled of toxic toxic activities and things that makes you see a polygamous setting as something that it is not going to be welcoming to you as an individual. From what you see in society, you feel, no, this is not for me because it just comes with lots of um, kind of disagreement, hatred, and all of that. However, We've I've seen just very few minute sincerely because we have to be sincere in all what we say, all what we say and all what we do. They are successful polygamous family, but the ones that are not successful, that are not even encouraging, far outweighs those that we've seen to be proven to be a very good one to be successful. So I can say, yeah, they are successful ones, but very few, very very few. But bulk of it doesn't work. And, you know, it boils down to the fact that humans are involved. And it's beyond just having a good intention whatsoever. There will be many triggers. There will be shaitan coming and doing lots of things that will keep the family in, this, in, in a kind of disagreement and all of that. So I think that's it with respect to my environment. 
Okay, subhanAllah. So um, I wanted to know, like, for yourself personally, like, how have you accepted it? You know, like, what's made it something that you felt that you could deal with? I mean, as far as I understand, you're a first wife, right? Yeah. So, okay, alhamdulillah. So, actually, for me as a person, I try my best not to take my definition from what, uh, definition of a particular thing from what the society like make, made me to like see it as rather i try my best to go back to the dean what does allah says about this thing what does the prophet said about this thing and so with that i'm ha i'm able to look at whatsoever it is now for instance the polygamy from a very unbiased perspective so for me when it came, that was the, all the. It's in fact, I never saw it coming sincerely because I got married twenty twenty, um twenty 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 January. So all through the year, everything was cool, fine. It was a normal me and my spouse relationship. Twenty twenty one, everything was cool. Not until twenty twenty two, um around I think April or so, that he, that we just had a kind of sincere talk between ourselves we were just sitting down and just ch chatting as usual because we are very we are very good friends my and myself and my spouse so we were ch chatting and he told me that he'll be interested in doing this um going into a polygamous a polygamous setting so i said okay no problem if that's what well, because he has already been he has already he's already he's always a good guy he has been there for me he has been taking care of me as expected in fact i could score him 100 percent in terms of how how responsible he has been so at that point that i brought it to my table i felt like if this is what this man wants and if this is going to give him a kind of happiness even though it's going to make me sad and down but provide that it's something that will keep him happy to just like he has been making me happy. Let me allow him. Not allowing him might even end up making my own marriage not successful. So at the end, I lose. So immediately he was trying to like bring the talk with me. I tried myself. I will, I already said calming myself down because I've been learning how to have a very strong emotional intelligence. That way one is able to deal with issue correctly. So I mean, when we were chatting that day, I told him that no problem, but okay, 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 not soon. Like, you know, every man would just be like, okay, I have no, okay, not soon. So, and then everything just happened rapidly before you know it. I, I, at some point I realized that he had someone already and I, and the fact that I knew that it's, they were, they've, they've gone far with the marriage talk with the sister he got. Then and then I told myself, the best thing for you is to ha accept. I have zero justification to stand and say, no, you can't do this thing because will I say he's not capable? Definitely he's capable. Since he's capable, then what, what, what's my, I have no reason. I have to just deal with my own emotion that I'm left with. So when I knew that he had someone that he has even gone to see her parents and everything is in order for them, I told him, no problem. Let me speak with her. So, and he, he he contacted her, I greeted her, and I told her that, okay, I'm a cool person, and I'm not interested in competing. For this, um, like, I'm just interested in all, seeing all of us succeed. So when she's coming, she should come and add value to the table. She should not scatter the table. So and she told me, no problem, and all this cool. I told her, okay. And uh, that was how we started building the relation I started building relationship between both of us. So I had a WhatsApp contact and I told her, let's be friends and fine. Like I, I tried my best to embrace her because I at like uh, some years back I was in a polygyny group whereby they they talked about you befriending your co wife is the best way to undo the whole issue. So I already had that information at hand. So and as Allah we had habits, even as I then I never knew that I too come in something that I'll have to practice because I never see myself practicing it. I just thought it was just a random information I have at hand. So immediately Allah brought it into a reality. I told my, I, I tried my best to embrace her as much as possible, even far before the officiation of the marriage. So I told, I, I told her that we should be friends on our, on our own way. 
we shouldn't fight because of a man because he's just a human being and it's not what it's it's not what it at all it's not what it and then i i from there we're able to start sending setting boundaries then in during our course of our conversation i made out to understand that did you realize that there's an existing love story between my spouse and i it's not because the fact that he's coming for you that doesn't mean that he doesn't love me and i'm very sure he has made you like realize all this too so i just need to like say all this to her so that she, we could she if there is any time she can want to make 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 her maybe misbehave or something it could make her to be on track that no i shouldn't waste my time doing this i should just try my best to do good so i was trying to all the conversations i was having with her within that moment were tilted towards purifying my intention and her intention and we should see ourselves as friends as sisters irrespective of the fact that we have to share the same man which is difficult to conceive and more difficult to even experience but to make it easier the best was for me to prepare both of us so and as Allah made it she's a very cool, cool lady she she's calm and all of that so I was able, we were able to like manage those moments very well together in fact you could notice that she's very respectful of me she doesn't just talk like during the course of us chatting or discussing which i see this respect and other she really has for me so and she deserve i also deserve to respect her in the best of ways so and that was and along the line we had to travel abroad for my studies because we, i was planning with my spouse to go with my daughter mm -hmm. to study abroad but it, it didn't materialize you know, things will just happen and I was forced to leave the country to go and study because we've already invested. Everything happened last year in a very fast way and in a very complicated way. But then I had mm. to travel out of Nigeria to go and do my study. And I said, as I said earlier, we actually planned to go to, with my spouse and my daughter, but it didn't materialize because of some mm. unforeseen circumstances that are all mm -hmm. arise then. So I, and I told him that, ah, it's now that you've even brought up the polygamy issue it's a relief for me at least i could be able to like focus over there at least you have someone taking care of you in a halal setting mm -hmm. so fast forward to oh so i had to leave nigeria towards the ending of last year for my study and after i left like after some months they got married alhamdulillah allow my very for them so they got married and sincerely the reality sets in because I had to do it, a kind of um, the the fact that I was separated from my daughter unexpectedly, and my spouse is another with another person, all of that. So it's, it's kind of difficult. It was a very very difficult situation. But then, but then, but then, the fact that as soon as I realized that the discussion we had the other day is turning into reality, I told myself the test is here for you, Rabia. Like, this is a test taken from Allah. Immediately, I realized that it's a test because I usually tell my spouse that, ah, definitely I love the Prophet. I love Allah first, then the Prophet. Then, and then he will be like, okay, then your parents. I said, no, your love tastes different. Love of my parents tastes different, but Allah and his Rasul are the priority. Like, we don't have this kind of spiritual discussion with him. So immediately I knew, mm -hmm. I said, okay, this is Allah trying to test my assertion that I do say that, okay, I love Allah, I love Allah, I love Allah. If truly I love Allah and my husband is trying to do something that is halal, Allah allows it, why should I stand it? Even though I don't like it, even though I would like, because I, I don't like it because of, don't, I don't like it because of, I, I, I just want, don't want to like it. I don't like it because of, it's, it comes with pain, you understand? It comes with pain. Yeah, so, I, but, yeah. So I to, I tried to pet myself and made myself to realize that this is a test that has come up and you have to really stand up for yourself because you can't just afford to feel woefully before Allah. So but by, by, by during those times, I tried my best to become more spiritually active because that's the only way to stay sane. Immediately I mm. do my salah, I pray in a language that I feel more connected with Allah. Like that's my local language i make yeah, i make supplication to him yeah i pour mm -hmm. everything in my heart to him and make and immediately i do feel relieved immediately is a therapy for me like immediately so that mm. was how i was able to manage through until i went to malaysia to do. so when i got to malaysia too, and when the marriage came to force it was very difficult the pain was so excruciating as if 
<laughs> it's like a death of a loved one like sincerely I say, yeah it's so excruciating but then i told i i was not i on the day they were having the nikah i managed i summoned all the old courage to send both of them a message wishing them success in their marital life and just mm-hmm. a good at least is there are things that are difficult to do but when you do it for the sake mm-hmm. of allah definitely you would you would have every reason to be glad that you actually went out of your way to do it so that was what made me to yeah to like still wish them well on that day that is a, is a so uh, that came is so excruciating pain for me so i wish them both of them well and that was it so after then i tr- i tried my best to still make sure that i don't allow my emotion to rub off on my co-wife at all because she doesn't deserve it it's a spouse so it's a right to be happy in our marriage she deserves to 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 have a like a kind of peace of mind i shouldn't be the one that is going to like make her to be in kind of um emotional like i don't even know i don't i don't want to attack emotion in any way i was bent on ensuring that i wouldn't be the cause of anything bitter for her so i made all those resolution and i continue with our relationship so uh, along the line among those strategies we put in place where uh i opened a group chat for the father was away i opened a group a whatsapp group chat for myself our spouse and her so the three of us were in the group that way we could bond together through this since i was not around i was in malaysia so so that was how okay, so would you would you would you say that being in malaysia um when they did their nikah is something that made it easier for you do you th- personally think or maybe more difficult wow that's a very good question so i have the like actually it's made it easy because i told myself that wow this is a gift from allah allah knew that this marriage was to come up so he prepared us for malaysia but basically it was maybe for my own benefits that it's cause i if, if if i knew i'll be the only one in malaysia i would never have applied for the graduate school program but then there was a bigger picture that i i we none of us knew about which was the polygamy that was to come to being let's say i was in nigeria it would have been difficult because people will say things that is going to make you feel angry and it can even make you make your intention difficult to execute i had a good intention right from the day i knew about his intention but if i was in nigeria i might be people would say things like oh she's not a good wife oh she's not capable that's why he's married another one oh this oh that oh this mm-hmm. oh that so and at that moment it will, yeah yeah these are things that the society will see even though it i said earlier it is general practice but these are the I am assumptions that are being made in a very annoying yes, and and, and, I think these are, and it's really bad I think because I think that's, yeah. that's one of the things I pointed out to a couple of sisters previously is that when um when you know even when um for example different sheikhs you hear that they when they when they're being asked about polygyny by sisters oh you know um the, like sisters who don't want their husband to do it for example they'll ask questions like oh you know how can I you know I don't want my husband to marry a second or third wife or whatever and you know then the shirt will advise him oh well make sure you do everything to keep him happy um so he yeah. won't need one and, you know upon that and i think this is the wrong answer because polygyny it's, it's, isn't about you're taking another wife because you yeah. because the one that you've got doesn't make you happy do you know what i mean polygyny yeah. is a lot deeper than that i think this is why yeah. alas panatala allowed it because it's something in the nature of men that you know he knows how he made the man i'm not saying every man wants to be you know wants to have more than one wife but the reality is it is a part of the nature of men that you know that is part of their capabilities or maybe that their their desires that they would want to have um, more than one wife and also want to have a very large family as well and polygyny is the obvious way to go about doing it subhanallah so it's not right to you know make these kind of statements so that women already feel that they're deficient because the husband has decided to look for another wife because that is not the reason you know it doesn't have to be that there's something wrong with her or he doesn't love her or she didn't do something that he wants her to do or something like that you know so this is the problem and these are the kind of things that i think makes it as you mentioned it's like plays with your mind as a woman obviously you you start thinking oh there's something wrong with me why does he need to go somewhere else and all these kind of things and but so on that I wanted to ask you um, as well another question about uh, 
the qualities um, that a man, that you personally think, what qualities do you think a man should have um, in order to be able to practice polygyny with success and, in, you know, in a good and fair way? Okay, yeah, this has, I, to start off with, it's, polygamy is a greater test even for the main flock because it's difficult to be just. So among those qualities that at least a man can help himself to have in order to scale through the test he has really put himself to undergo, he has to be very, very conscious of Allah. Like he has to have a very good intention. The moment a man doesn't have a good intention, in the first instance, when getting the second or third or fourth wife, then there is no way, there is no way the polygamy family is going to be a successful one. There is no way because intention is really, really important. So you should have a very good intention. You should be sincere and you should do it in such a way that he wants to really please Allah through it. Because as humans, whenever we think that we are capable of doing things by ourselves, then Allah will leave it to yourself and you will feel woefully. You wouldn't be able to achieve the aim, even if you have a good intention. But the man should show his incapability, like is he would, yeah, Allah, I wouldn't be able to do this as expected. You will be the only one to be able to help me to achieve it. So that way, the man will always be conscious of Allah because he knew that he it is he has a high possibility of failing if he does not involve Allah in his affairs. So that way, he should try his best to, as far as aside from having a good intention, he should really, really make sure that. He has a good connection with Allah because Shaitan wouldn't allow him. Shaitan wouldn't want to make his family to be successful. So he has to really stand up for himself and be a spiritual man on his own. He should be very prayerful and he should keep on renewing his intention over and over. Another quality that he needs to have, aside from being spiritually active, is that he should have a good level of empathy because we are wired differently. A man that doesn't try to understand that, oh, my first wife is really, this event is really hard on her. Being she's a woman, she's not a man. She's going to process all these events in a very different way from where I did. Because when polygamy comes, at least when the issue of polygamy comes up, the existing wife or the existing wives are the one that is hot or she's the one that is hot. While the new bride they are bringing and the husband, they are not hot at all. Is out of three parties, let's say, being the first wife, out of the three parties involved, it's only the first wife that is hot. The wife, she's happy she's getting married to the, 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 the man of her, the man of her dream or something. And so he's happy that he's exactly. getting a new chick mm -hmm. and all of that. So like in the form of a wife. So they are both happy. It's only one. The, the, the wife that it's not that the existing wife that it's not that that is put into a difficult situation. So he should try his best to put himself in her shoes if i were the one if if i were the one that my wife was opportune to get another man in a halal way to marry whilst i still remain a husband how will i feel the man should should be able to have this quality of empathy whereby you you see yourself that okay how will i feel i'm very sure if it were the men they would shoot themselves with a gun let's say we women were allowed to like have another man in a halal way because they are more jealous than we have so a man should really try his best. That way, you will be able to help the existing wife to heal better, and at least you you that way. Even when she's, because there is no way, it's when the issue of polygamy comes. The first wife, no matter how good she is, no matter a good intention, she will, she she will, she wouldn't be that exactly that same wife again. Exactly, she will be moody. She wouldn't be happy. So you can't expect her to be that same wife that will be disturbing you with love messages as usual, trying to bring up jokes, trying to only just do things that are important, things that are necessary. Maybe um, take care of your laundries, cook for you, do things. But the other romantic aspects, sincerely, it will be affected. But it takes a very, like, a, 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 like a patience from the part of the man to be able to understand and say, okay, let me bear it. I cost her all this. Let me also be there. So aside from being, uh, aside from having the culture of being um, compassionate, 
you should also be patient very very patient like very very patient because actually you should remember that you caused out all this pain unwillingly the other wife coming she signed in for polygamy willingly but you the first wife you never signed in for polygamy willingly most of the time mm. I, 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 so you didn't do it too. So it was it's you you just put her into the pain unwillingly so you should at least and the fact that she didn't decide to file for a divorce because if you as a woman believe that mm. you cannot deal with this this is going to break you this is going to make you maybe to even at the end of the day sin by ending the work of allah is better you leave the marriage than you should stay in the marriage so the fact that this woman never made a decision to walk away you should at least offer some space some patience some kind of understanding that way she'll be able to understand she she too she will be like oh this man is really tight tried his best to support me during this trying this during this hard time of mine we are we all have conscience even 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 if it's the the suburb of the pain but the fact that he's showing you is able to show you that he's is is very very sorry to see you in this situation and all of that as we women that we have a very soft heart women will be like you will find a space in your heart to still like start loving him back start wanting to also make the marriage work your own marriage work so because it's sincerely it's it's an event that can break a marriage is an event that can break a marriage because so it, it it's not for the faint hearted it's not for the faint hearted so yeah so you should under so patients i've made mention of you should have a good intention you should be spiritually active he should be uh, he should have a quality of being he should be he should be he should, he should have empathy for her like by putting himself in her situation and uh, you should be patient then above all you should make sure he has the resources like not really uh, in terms of worldly aspects you should no matter yes. how nice it is no matter how kind he is if he doesn't have the resources to take care of the family he should not even consider it because polygamy is very expensive to manage a polygamous family is very expensive to manage because um for instance now in a monogamy setting um just one expenditure is needed whenever you have more than one it is double or multiple and for instance, when you're in a polygamous family, a woman tends not to care. She'll be like, oh, my husband, you need this money better than I do. Use it for yourself. Or use to get things for the, uh, or, or don't worry. Do, do, a woman in a polygamous family, due to the love she has for her husband purely or out of being, wanting the husband to be pleased with her, she can decide to forgo some things that I don't, there's no, you don't need to buy this. I can manage. But the moment a man has, another wife you, you're telling her and you're telling the old world that i am capable i can take all your responsibility 100 and one percent that's why i'm bringing another person so that way the existing with the first wife wouldn't be willing to maybe ignore things that before she would think is not necessary even those things are not necessary provided that she needs it and you are willing to maybe get it for the second wife or the third wife of she would say she needs it as well so things change these are just the reality these are just and it's not because of she's selfish there was a reason behind uh, why she was in polygamous setting that she was able to let go. That, I don't mind. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. But whenever there is another person, that statement of "don't worry" will become "I want." I also want. I, she wouldn't say that again. So that way, your expenditure will be increasing so so much. So a man among the qualities you need to have is for you to be buoyant. You need to be buoyant. You need to be buoyant. So, and above all, a man, the, uh, sorry, not above all. And the last point, there are many, many qualities, but the last one I'll be chipping in is for the man to be intelligent. A oh, man mama. that is going into a polygamy that is not intelligent will fail so woefully in the, in the polygamous marriage. Because we women, we are very, very, very corny when we want to be. Mm. We have the power to, to, to make a man to divorce any of his wife. We have the power. It's, it takes only the fear of Allah for you not to make up things that is going to lead to the lead to problem in the marriage of your other co-wives. SubhanAllah. 
So it's good you mentioned this because this is this is the first time I've heard anybody I think um, even mention this point. You know, Subhanallah, but it, it's it's true. Like it's it's that fact that you know the potentially the wives could to, can kind of band together and easily gang up on the husbands as well. You know, even we have examples. Um, you know, Subhanallah, with in in the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, with um, I think it was Aisha and uh, yeah. maybe Hafsa. I think, yeah, Subhanallah. Yeah. When you know. With the with the story about the honey, they didn't want him to. Yeah, it was yeah. there was noting that he spent a long time at Zainab's house. I think it was yeah, so, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. because of that, they didn't like it. So they decided to both say that, oh yeah, he, his that he, his breath smelt bad, yeah, because of just, because yeah. of this honey that he was taking. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah. So even 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 our mothers in in the Deen, Subhanallah, they they yeah. even had a thought to, and, and and acted it out as well. This kind of you know, idea because of this jealousy. Yeah. So this this yeah. shows how jealousy can exist. You know, subhanallah. Yeah, Even with some a woman who's very religious and practicing, subhanallah. Yeah, yeah. So truly, just like it's just like we've seen it. Yeah, this example you've cited. So, so it takes a lot. A man needs to be very intelligent. So that way, you'll be able to realize whensoever you are to comment. Whatsoever you have to just okay, how to mediate, how not to how to handle issues. Sincerely, a man that doesn't have a kind of that level of intelligence wouldn't do well, no matter his good intention, no matter his good intention. Because because and you know, we women, we give things different meaning. Sometimes the man doesn't mean a particular thing, but you as a wife, the fact that you have a co-wife, you already give it one hundred and one meanings. And you start using it to react, using it to act. But a man should understand that a man that is intelligent will know that oh, she's she's been jealous. That's why. So and you know the, the best way to handle it, and the issue will just slide, and things will continue in a good way. But any man and and I I keep saying it, polygamy is not for kids. It's not for boys. It is for real men. It's for real men. So it's not just an idea you conceive and just execute. You have to have given it a deep thought and you, ha you have to just know that it wouldn't be easy because monogamy itself is not easy. Not talk of you combining additional personalities into your family. So it's not an easy thing. So I think these are some of the qualities a man needs to have. You know how to sustain his polygamous family. <sighs> Exactly, definitely. Alhamdulillah. So, you, Alhamdulillah, you've mentioned there about the finances and how the husband needs to provide financially for, you know, all of this family that he has. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm assuming that in your case, that is how it is. Yeah, he's trying his best. So, he needs to work harder, obviously. Yes, of course, subhanAllah. And um, so, so on the flip side, what about the sisters, the women? What kind of qualities do you think they need to have in order for polygyny to be... Um, practice successfully um obviously you know you mentioned some things with regards to the men and you know mentioned some things with regards to women as well there but yeah what what qualities makes it easier for a woman to be able to go about accepting polygyny in her in her life okay i'll be using myself as a case study even though some might say it's just an eight month journey i tell you it's eight months but it looks like eight years already <laughs> it might be eight months but i could say it looks so it's been a long time but then we ask Allah to keep us steadfast. So I think the first thing, based on mm -hmm. it's eight months already, but I can tell you I've seen good results, positive results already. So I think I'll talk from that point of what I've practiced and what is working for me. So the first one is commitment to a relationship with Allah. Sincerely, nothing will keep you sane when this event strikes, except your relationship with Allah. Nobody, nobody can help you. Not even your mom, not even your siblings, not even your good friends, not even the husband, no matter how much you love, not talking about is the one causing you the pain. So whenever this event strike, I'm bringing, let me firstly do it from the point of the first wife. So you have to, you have to truly, truly, truly have a good relationship with Allah, sincerely, because nothing will make sense except that only. By praying to him, by renewing your intention, it is going to go a long way in keeping you sane because this event can lead to a mental health issue. So you should have a relationship with Allah whereby you reaffirm that, yeah, Allah, you are my priority. You are the one I want to please. 
my marriage is an act of ibadah because before the monogamy sincerely sister you can be saying your marriage yeah it's ibadah is no this is the time you know this level of your sincerity when polygamy issue comes in for we women that's why you know if truly you are in, in the marriage for the sake of allah because romans uh -huh. also ever out of the box at that moment it's we need to mm. you need to water it again that's the reality and you're starting all over when we talk of love romans anything you're starting all over because you'll be broken literally so you have to have and when you are broken the only way you could mend everything back starting from yourself is you going back to allah so you make you make your relationship with allah very very important very very sacred if you've not been keeping that kind of relationship with allah you, you better start immediately because if not mm. that person wouldn't ill will so you try to make sure that you have a good relationship with allah everything you look at it from the lens of spirituality so let's take for instance my husband is doing this okay does allah want him is allah is is, is there a sin no is your husband capable yes okay what else my feelings okay you ask yourself what if this husband my husband dies is it better it's not better for you to share him than he should die because if he's dead you can't even share him you can't even have a bit of him again or mm -hmm. and you might even end up having to remarry so you bring things from the point of spirituality to make it objective you'll be able to be objective mm -hmm. so and the second one you shouldn't you should you should have self-love. Self-love is very, very important. When you don't have uh -huh. love for yourself, you can't give an authentic love to anyone if you don't have self-love. It's not being selfish. It's loving yourself in such a way that you wouldn't allow anything to make you become miserable. When this event happened to me, I told myself I would never become a spoiled vegetable because no one needs a spoiled vegetable when i'm rotting <laughs> i become no more attractive i'm living a miserable mm -hmm. life what do i stand to gain? that means i hate myself and am i fair to myself and if mm. i don't love myself there is no way i could love my husband there is no way because i'll be depressed i won't be active I wouldn't even have time to even think of what are the new things i should add up to spice up my marriage or because i'm just there sitting down yes so, if you love yourself properly when you love yourself you'll be like girl you deserve to enjoy the dunya you deserve to enjoy the company of a spouse just because of his making the decision doesn't mean that you you're not entitled to being happy because when you are when you you know you're not there when you're not in the picture him and the co-wife will be there enjoying themselves they'll move on with their life he'll move on with yes, life. You might not be, yeah you might not be divorced but you you just be tormenting yourself unnecessarily well mm. in the instance when in the in the in the in the and, and so as if you, you you can't get the happiness that like it's 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 feasible you still you're still entitled to being happy so you should please the person should please love herself love herself love yourself so so much such a way that you do self-care you take care of your health if it demands you to take supplements for you to go for spa for you to do good things that make you look good for yourself first look good for yourself be be confident yes, in yourself of first that way, even your spouse will see you as a new bride over and over and over again. So you should love yourself properly. When you love yourself properly, you'll be able to realize that loving yourself will make it easy for you to love your spouse and to love your co-wife. And, you, and that way, you have peace of mind. When you're not in disagreement with people, when you're in good time with people, there will be prosperity, there will be happiness, things will go so well for everyone. And there's this feeling of happiness when there's success. There's this feeling of peace of mind. So... The second thing I will highlight is having self-love for yourself. The third one I would like to talk about is you should have a very appreciable level of emotional intelligence. Some of mm. us are not born with it. You have to learn. You have to learn. You have to read books. You have to expose yourself to lectures. If it's for you to seek up, the how do I go about this? How do I? Because if you are not aware of your emotions, you tend to react in a bad way and you end up regretting. But when you emotional intelligence dictate that you recognize your emotion, you 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 don't make things to get to you, you translate things in the proper way, in a way that is befitting to yourself, that doesn't turn you into something miserable. 
So by having emotional intelligence, you be able to realize that okay, this man is annoying me. What is what he's doing is annoying me, but I refuse to be annoyed because I don't want to hurt myself. This with when I began to realize that I've gotten to have a very appreciable level of emotional intelligence. Sincerely, I was happy and I was so thankful to Allah. And I was proud I gave it a shot. Because, mm-hmm. well, alhamdulillah, because many things will annoy you. And the man doesn't mean to annoy you sincerely. Even your co-wife, she might say things or do things that she didn't mean it. But do meant you allow emotion to, to just normal emotion. You just think that ah, she just wants to. No. When you think about, okay, does she mean it? You should look at it from another lens. You should also ask yourself, do you even deserve to be getting angry on this petty thing? Allow it to go. And you experience some level of peace, happiness, serenity. So you should be aware of what comes to you. And, and emotional intelligence dictates that you define things for yourself. So that way you'll be able to like take care of yourself properly in such a way that things don't get to you. I'm not saying it wouldn't get to you. It would get to you, but you quickly make it not continue to get to you. It's it's it will reach yes. a level where it wouldn't even get to you anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the um the fourth one is you should be very patient. It's difficult. We, many of us are not born with the characteristics of perseverance, being patient, and all of that. You have to learn it. You have to learn it. You have to be patient. And these are uh, these points are for those who have decided to stay in the marriage. As far as you've decided to stay with the man, you just have to be patient. And by being patient, dictate that things will like annoy you. But you 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 remember you are doing you are you are you are staying in this mind for the sake of Allah. You are you are rewarded. You should remember the reward for sabr. You so that way it will be easier for you to overlook. Though when you need to speak, you should speak out respectfully. Never keep quiet when you need to speak out to your spouse that okay, this is this are what you're doing and I don't like it. You should, but Mm -hmm. then you shouldn't go to the point of nagging. Events like this can make Mm -hmm. a woman start nagging because you have many, many points to bring up. You have many, many things to like say, but you have to just try to whilst you are expressing yourself, make sure you are not nagging. So you be patient and you, you you seek your reward from Allah and you just see it as if okay at the end I'm please trying to please Allah and sincerely Allah wouldn't waste one's effort no matter how little Allah is going to crown it and you yourself you start seeing the reward even right from the dunya so uh, another quality aside from being patient being patient for I be patient for the sake of Allah not for the sake of anything that way it will be easier you can't be patient for the sake of a woman being. Whenever you are patient of yourself, I'm yes, patient of for the sake of Allah. Because yes. we human beings love reward. That way, you know you're expecting a reward in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. So, and another quality is for you, be welcoming. Be welcoming. Be friendly. You Even if it's even if you're a kind of gentle person, you don't really talk much, you don't really bo- offer that welcoming attitude to to both your husband and the co-wife you have nothing to lose rather you have many things to gain be welcoming not if your co-wife family be welcoming to them address them in a respectful way if there was there is any point you will need to like be in contact or you will meet be, be welcoming that way Allah is going to increase the love between every among everyone and where, where there is love, goodness will always come up. So even if you say that, yeah, I don't like, I would like us to be distant. I would like us not, but irrespective, put that back of mind that I want to be friendly. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to have anything to be with rivalry. There is no way we are humans. You want to be, you, you want to feel like, okay, I wish uh, I'm my husband's favorite. But all these things, a Muslim should learn to avoid uh, nurturing all these thoughts. You just try to be the best version of yourself. Because the moment you start not being welcoming, you will start competing with your co-wife in a very unhealthy manner. In fact, the best thing, if you could delete the word competition in your dictionary in a polygamous marriage, it will go a long way to make sense to you. That way, you are only busy with trying to make yourself better, 
trying to make your marriage better whilst wishing your mm -hmm. co-wife to success in their various marriages because it might be as if you are with a man but it's a dis distinct and separate marriages you cannot combine them yes, together mm -hmm. so that way you should by welcoming as lots of things be friendly avoid competing avoid 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 hating just 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 do that okay i want all of us to enjoy just good vibes only good vibes only and sincerely mm -hmm. the way you see it that's our life is going to make it for you so i think these these are really things that i would say has been, has really worked for me alhamdulillah and i'm i'm right now at the point of my life i'm just asking allah to make me better to grant me steadfastness because <laughs> alhamdulillah mm -hmm. i'm pleased Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So, so from your perspective, and obviously you've been in polygyny not 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 the longest of times, but you know it's coming up to a year now. What would you personally say? Um, do you think are some of the benefits for you? Alhamdulillah. So, one of the greatest benefits I've gotten is that it's made me to be sure and like to have a good understanding that truly and sincerely i am doing all i'm doing in my marriage for the sake of allah and whenever you do something for the sake of allah is an ibadah you'll be rewarded intention is very important we muslims we shouldn't lose god that never in everything we do whether motherhood whether being a daughter whether being a son or a, you should not lose god that intention and the the understanding that intention is really important so right now in my marriage i'm happy i'm happy that i'm able to know that the fact that i did not file for a divorce then i'm no more doing i can't bear this pain again or i didn't fight for a divorce but it seems as if i'm separated from him i, I didn't try to reignite the old love make everything better since i didn't do these two things i didn't divorce him i didn't get myself separated from him it's made me to realize that truly and surely you're doing this for the sake of Allah. And this has been a source of peace for me because I'm always trying to purify my intention. But I've not been able to ascertain this, the level of how sincere I am in my marriage until this event came into being. So I can say 101%. Every love I give to my spouse, every love I give to his family, to, her, to my co-wife, to her family, I'm doing for the sake of Allah. It's a difficult thing to do, but I've really gone out of my way to do it and i never i don't have any intention not to stop doing it because i know how i'll be rewarded and i know that it is for my own benefits so alhamdulillah the first one i'm able to realize that yes i have a good intention my intention has been perfected alhamdulillah i ask allah to perfect it more so the second mm -hmm. benefit i derived i mean is that it makes me and my husband to become more like more more happy, let me say, our marriage, our, our monogamous marriage turned polygamy, and it has become more peaceful. We've been living peacefully before. There is no way us spouse will have it twisted, which is a normal thing, because you and your siblings, your parents, you do get, so a spouse is normal for you, for your spouse to, to have it twisted. But overall, it has been good. But with this polygamy, I can tell you that it became more good, because now there is, there is space. Yeah. Um, I we are being we are not feeling suffocated to ourselves be, by being always together every day. You you go come back at home. You meet your spouse every single day. No, right now we don't see each other every day because he has to share his time, his days, and that way there is room to miss each other. You look mm -hmm. forward to meeting. You look forward to like bonding. Oh, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see you. So there is that room to, to miss. Like, so it, the fact that I've tasted monogamy and now I'm tasting polygamy, it's make me to see the beauty more because I am able to like, okay, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, these few days that he'll be around, what am I to do? What am I not going to do? Okay, but so, and so that's a, about second benefit. Another benefit is that days that he's not around, I feel so free and relaxed. I can decide that, oh, Miriam, we are not cooking today. We will eat. Okay, we will do this. We will get our food from maybe this place. Okay, we will, we will, we will do, this will be our day because it will, it will be so free and so, so very, it will be light because taking care mm -hmm. of a man is not easy. So when a man is around, there are a lot of things you need to put in place. There are a lot of things you need to do. When he's not around, 
it is going to be a kind of um, break time, free time. You have other things to use your time for. You can study, you can bond with your friends, your family. And, and and it's a good thing which you can't get in. You can't just leave your husband and say, I'm going to my mom's place to stay for two days or three days. You can't say that because who will take care of your spouse? Who will cook for him? Who will give mm -hmm. him? But now with polygam, I can't say, oh, I'm going to go and check on my mom and my dad. And it's a good thing. My parents will be happy to see me, happy to bond with me before I go back again. So it's, it's, a, it's a good thing for me. Then at least, then another, that was the third one. The fourth benefit I've seen is that at least now I have a co-wife in the form of a friend and a sister. Like we we, we relate so, 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 so much. Even maybe the very first day we were together at night. I was at her place. It was so good. Before I surprised her, I called her, do you want to take shawarma? She said, yes. I said, okay, I'm bringing it for you. So we went there, we chatted. We, like whenever you see both of us sitting down now, you wouldn't think we are co-wives you wouldn't mm. and it has really been a great satisfaction because i see her as a family i see and she also, so you and it's just as if you have a new a new a new a new companion that you enjoy each other's company yeah so it's a good thing for me it's a good thing for me alhamdulillah even though with all this i tell you it's no joke it's painful you have to implement all those all those points I gave earlier, all those qualities, not to be yes, able to like, have all this on your table. Mm. Subhanallah. So um, you mentioned your family a little bit there as well. So was your family supportive of, you know, your husband going into polygyny and you be you you accepting it? Were they, you know, okay with that? How what was their reaction? Actually, the fact that I'm a kind of person that values family we were brought up in a way that we understood that family relationship is sacred and being in good times really matters so the moment my us my spouse we had that chit chat i told you about earlier that where he told me that he would like to go into polygamy then and then i started preparing my family for the event so and the fact that we have a good call i i was saying that ah my spouse said this though so people should be expecting anytime it's possible it happens my mom was almost emotional so my sister came in mm -hmm. and tried to like we 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 the fact that we've prioritized peace in the family made it easier for us to like help one another regulate each other's one another's one one another's emotion. Like for instance, my mommy was when she asked ah, another wife for what? Like when I was just trying to like gist them that ah, oh, this is what we said, though, this is the new thing that might come up, or maybe in food shop. I quickly started preparing them against when it becomes real, just like the way I was preparing my personal self. So I prepared them mm -hmm. by making them know in a in a in a, in a funny way. In a, it's painful to me, but I try yes. to hide my pain. I hide it because if you want your marriage to work, you need to hide your pain from your family. Family, yeah. your first family are the ones that also love you the most, and they don't want to see you being hurt. Immediately mm -hmm. they realize that you're hot, they want to attack that thing that is hurting you. So course, I yes, knew that I already. Know. So I never and I knew my spouse, my spouse is a very good man. He doesn't deserve it. He's he's very respected in the family. And I don't want anything that will make him to become someone that is not he's been disrespected. I would never want mm -hmm. that to happen. So I tried my best to protect him by making it making this that it's not a big deal. After all, Allah allowed it. And and yes. and it it depends on what angle it was coming from. Imagine we now try to make a joke out of it. We told my mom that okay, imagine one of your younger sister got a very good man, and the, um, she, um you people you people accepted the man to marry your younger sister as a second wife just because you saw that the man was good. Have you also not hurt the family of the first wife? Do you understand the scenario? Of course, yeah. So this thing it depends on the on who it is happening to when it is happening to your family from the point of your daughter or your sister is going to as a second wife she got a good man everybody will be happy you forget about the first wife she's going to meet how she, her emotion will have been affected you're just happy that oh our daughter has gotten a good man alhamdulillah alhamdulillah everybody will be married happy but she the one that, that the, she is to be married upon our own family will be like ah this man why will you do this to our daughter why will you marry her when she's trying her best to be a good wife all this stuff so we tried to when we painted that scenario to our mom my elder sister did that so uh, even though we were all out even my other sister she was out but we knew that no this is not the time to make anything that is going to mess up the whole issue so my mom will now say mm -hmm. oh okay 
So we just use so she said, no, whensoever it happened, may Allah make it easy for all of you. May Allah bless the family. So that was how we um so even before it became a reality, we talked about it, just like we talked about my husband, I talked about it to my family. So that way I've been able to like control the feelings. When the events, when it not came into reality, it was a difficult one to swallow because people will be like, you know, it's also, it's kind of, just like I said, people will be thinking, what the society will think is that I'm not capable, that's why my husband married another person. Yes. Same thing with the family. Mm -hmm. You'll be looking at the father and the mother of the, um, first of all, your daughter was not capable. That was why she was married upon. Our marriage is barely mm -hmm. three years and the, the spouse has gotten another wife. Do you understand? Society has, <laughs> society knows how to assassinate your feelings. It's only when you don't give them way. You... Yeah. So those one, but my parents are good people. So they tried their, their best to just like, after all, you don't need to prove how good you are. You don't need to, it, Allah sees everything and they are respected in the society. So no, any, any right-minded person or any person that is sensible will know that it's just the normal. It's not because of the family is bad. That's why their daughter got married upon at, at a very very early moment. Our marriage married was just going to three years when they got married. So in the society, too, it was too early in the society. Normal. The definition was like, ah, just three years. You could need to still be bonding and all of that. Why new marriage? Blah 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 blah. So, but then one thing I did again was I avoid discussing the issue with my family. With, with all those moments I was in Malaysia, normally just ask of how oh, am I doing everything. I avoid like saying that ah, it's very you only mess up your marriage. That's just it. Mm. And if I was there complaining about how I feel, so it will be very um it will be difficult for even myself to heal. And not talking about your pain mm. to people easier for you to heal because when you keep talking about your pain to people, fine. I have people that help me during the just very few people that I knew that they could. Offer me like a, a, a shoulder to cry or to say things I want to see. Just very little. I can even count maybe just one or two. That those people, because we as a woman, you need someone to tell your pains to. And at that moment, your spouse is not the right person to to really. One hundred percent, you should tell your spouse what you feel, but you can't really explain. You can't because he can't even see me. He doesn't even. He can't see the state I was. You understand? Yes. Yeah, so I needed, so I had a support system. What, Sister Rihanna, then we were in Malaysia, uh, West, I was, yeah. So she was there for me, we were staying together. So she was there and she's a very good person. So I knew that she could offer me good advice, good reminders that was necessary at that moment. So I avoid talking with my family. So that way, it made everything go well. When Even um, when I, I've been in Nigeria for a while now for my vacation, and everything is fine. Everything is okay. My spouse still come here. He's still ch ch just with my dad as usual. We still have a relationship mm -hmm. with my mom. Everything is normal. And it's alhamdulillah it was okay. because of the measures one have put in place. A good intention is not sufficient only. You have to put in the hard work. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, the so um, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask about, um, you know, being obviously the first wife, because often people, you know, they've even requested from me that, you know, some people have requested, for example, that I get more stories of perspective of first wife. And sometimes, you know, first wives, maybe they're not even willing to talk about this kind of, you know, this, you know, this the, being in this kind of marriage. And, um, you know, often the idea is that, you know, the first wife, she's more important because, you know, she was there before subsequent wife so what's what's your kind of perspective on that okay so we'll be looking at it from two perspectives the spirit the spiritual perspective and the worldly perspective let me start with the worldly perspective if we'll be dropping if we wouldn't be considering what does allah want us to do what does he ask us not to do sincerely you feel as that you feel as such that yeah i'm more important because we all started i started with him when he had nothing why she she's coming when he, when we when we've already built what we've been able to build, you see with this one you're taking Allah out of the equation, so that way you feel entitled, you feel more important that I I I be the cause. They said behind every successful man, there is a woman behind this, right? There is a woman, so you feel you are that woman behind your husband's success, and that way you feel mm -hmm. more important. But then, 
what when we when that's the dunya perspective that's the worldly perspective that and you 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 justify it and say yes i'm important i, I was there for you I, I helped you to come this far blah 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 blah, blah, blah and you him. but then we are muslims we are muslims we shouldn't we these are what makes us to stand out we don't just look at things from a worldly perspective we take it back to the spiritual perspective so that we could be objective so when you are in the spiritual when you look at it from the spiritual lens you notice that you realize that everybody is just important in their own way all the os you are the first wife is not more important than the second wife and same thing mm -hmm. we are distinct and separate personalities i have my good she has our good i have my bad she has our bad i have my success so does she so and as far as the marriage setting is concerned you people i'm sorry to say it might be difficult for first wives to swallow but we are the same we are equal it's just the timing that differs as i'm and i'm yes. speaking to you from a spiritual perspective that's just it and you if you are if you've not chosen to be a muslim and a step further a good muslim this is the perspective you should like hold on to that she, she, she she's good in her own way i'm good in my own way my husband is expected to to see to our various needs based on our specialities like based on what i need what i need is not what she needs most time Let's say, for instance, now, uh -huh. she, she, right now, she, um, she's doing her undergraduate program. I'm doing my postgraduate program. We are both students. My husband can't say uh -huh. that, okay, I'll be, uh, the tuition fee I'll be paying will be equal. The tuition fee are different or the expenditure, the, uh -huh. allow, the, the study allowance or something, they are different. So you can't say uh -huh. that someone is more than that. No, that, it just comes from you taking care of the, um, the need of each wife based on their um, peculiarities am i like making a yeah. sense yeah yes, definitely yes yeah so that way there is no one is important than the other what are your need first mm -hmm. one tell your husband these are what i need what i my second one then it is then the husband is left with doing the right thing there are some things that obviously it's both of them that everybody needs provision everybody needs to eat everybody so these are things that you must get for them the same thing but there are some things that it mm -hmm. can't be the same because the other person doesn't need it. Yes. So uh, that, that way, the, the issue of importance has been striked out. You, everybody is, is, is important in a just way, equally. It yes. might not, it might, yeah, yeah. So there is equity. Yes. And a first wife, yes. sorry, let me have this. A first wife, don't, don't mess up with yourself by having this feeling of, I'm more important than her. She's this. You only mess mm -hmm. up with yourself. That's just it. And you and at the end of the day, you due to that thought, it makes you to misbehave, and you can even become a laughing stock, someone that is not even respected. And remember, your respect is very important. You being a respectable person is very at any point in life. Never water away the respect people have for you. Always be a respectable person. Mm -hmm. yeah so and by you dropping your ego you not taking making yourself more than you are missing yourself as a big deal will make you to be mm -hmm. humble and being when you are humble people respect humble people so first wives let's be humble <laughs> may Allah make it easy <laughs> I mean alhamdulillah mashallah very, okay what um, would you advise to um, well, some any sister who is thinking about going into polygyny as a second wife, right? Yeah, or third oh, or fourth. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. So, first thing I would order is she should remember. She should also she should firstly take the feelings of the first wife into consideration. She should imagine herself being in the shoe. Like, okay, I'm the one. I'm the first wife. My other one's my. How will I feel? That way, you can't experience what you feel, but it just give you a kind of clue about what it feels like. That way, whatsoever um, um, lack of um, co being considered that you be you you have a tendency to like show show to your co-wife, it's to kind of regulate it. You remember that wow, 
this woman due to the decision of her husband to bring me she she has been she's made to go through all this pain and it's something she has to do with deal with for the rest of her life as far as she's alive she has to just deal with it mm. this woman she was she has never shared her husband before she she's she always she has always been having him to herself she has not been sh sharing it's so it's so it, it can be so crazy sharing like sharing it sincerely but it's just out of mm. taking it back to a spiritual perspective that make everything to make sense sincerely so it's not easy you should try your best to to respect her whereby she herself feel respected then no this person by so doing there is no way she wouldn't give you the respect you deserve but when you come to her and you are making her feel as if i'm important i'm a big deal that's why your husband is considering me that's why you i'm i'm being bought in sincerely you even if the co-wife doesn't doesn't react doesn't like react in return in a very hot in a very hurtful way to you definitely allah will deal with you because you willingly signed up for it your co-wife didn't sign up for it she was she she mm -hmm. she had no choice than to accept so at least you should show us some kind of care some kind of love you should you you shouldn't be too too i don't even know aggressive yeah that way and she should be mm -hmm. patient some when let's say for instance you're missing your co-wife and maybe she was not really really smiling please give us yeah. some excuse it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not easy just like try to give her one and one excuse whenever maybe you, maybe she did something that maybe hurts you or annoy you just be like oh she's she's still healing she's still trying to like accept the whole thing provide that she didn't slap you she didn't insult you mm -hmm. yes yeah, if, if, if it's only the like let's say the emotional feelings that was showing in her attitude please allow her with time things will get better just provide mm -hmm. that you as a second wife you have a good intention you are not going there to act like husband snatcher i see yes i'm the big deal i'm the new girl i'm the blah blah blah, blah. no you're going there mm -hmm. to join a family you are going there to add value to the existing value that has been built so that way you'll be able to sink into the family correctly such a way that everything will become better after your arrival it will be very bad it's, if it's after your arrival everything just got scattered due to you not being able to undo the issue in a very smart way so second wife to you and the subsequent wife to you have work to do i know that you also have your own emotional feelings someone told me that they also struggle with emotional feelings because sometimes you know as you might they, they, you sign in for polygamy and you are trying to enjoy what is being enjoyed only in monogamy that's not possible um, that's yes, not possible you as a second and subsequent wife you should come you should quickly understand it that no not what i'm seeing well, it's not what i do see in a in a husband and wife only relationship that i'll be experiencing no because you you can't have him all to yourself at every time you cannot be mm -hmm. calling him just at any time you want you should be respectful whenever he's with the co-wife avoid calling him to come over to your place when let's say let's say for example they are even living separately you shouldn't you shouldn't you should you shouldn't be interrupting and so if the, the first mm -hmm. wife to definitely she shouldn't do that that way when you are respectful in every sense to the best of your ability things will work very well so i think one thing that most first wives do complain about subsequent wives or, or is that this lack of respect no one is saying that you should she, she's older than you or not no it's just something that you need in order for things to work out for even you and the entire family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, the, the, the respect sincerely is what I really, really hammer on for the one coming. So, and the rest is left for our own marriage. For me, I, when I was talking about first wife, I, I mentioned some qualities like emotional intelligence, like being patient, all these because the husband is involved. You understand? Mm. It's from that perspective because you need to deal with co-wife you need to deal with the husband but for the second wife right now it's more of right now it's just it's it's been like um between okay the, you the first wife have no relation no has no no nothing to do with their marriage other than to wish them well. mm -hmm. that's why i'm not saying that eh, the second wife should be patient with the husband no i have zero business with your marriage the only thing i Mm -hmm. for you is the success of your mind i mean allah make it successful 
But every other thing, every other relationship with him, I, I stay out of it. You shouldn't meddle. Avoid it. Avoid meddling in their relationship. You have no business with it. So the second wife too, avoid meddling in your co-wife marriage. Mm-hmm. So you, you try to befriend your first wife, be nice to her. If there is, they should be gifting. It's good to gift. When you gift, it increase the love between people. Like, yeah. So that way, you should learn to be respectful to her. You should learn to give her space, allow her to heal. Mm-hmm. Whenever she's there, be there. Whenever she she, she, she she complains of something, use your intelligence to fix that thing. So it mm-hmm. takes an intelligent co-wife to, to, to do well. If just if you and your co-wife, yeah, let's say, for instance, now, the, the, the first wife annoyed you, it's not right for you to go and tell your husband that, so so and so annoyed me. Is you yeah. should learn to sort that between yourselves. It's not about mm-hmm. you going. Yeah. So at least you should she should be respectful, she should be intelligent, and she should be very caring. So I think that was, that way she will be helping the co-wife to heal properly, and that way the co-wife to the fact that she has a good intention. Hopefully, things will become easier. Sincerely, it's not what I was feeling last year that I'm feeling right now. The pain has waned. And as I, when I was feeling the excruciating pain, sincerely, if you told me that I was going to heal this fast, I will say it's a lie. If you tell me that I'll stop feeling mm-hmm. the pain, I do feel dead, disturbing pain, I'll say it's a lie. But now, the fact that I embrace that with all my own heart, in fact, I miss this art right now. Like, I miss mm-hmm. my poets because I, like, I enjoy mm-hmm. our company. Oh, and it's just that, that's a, that's a blessing of the inner of itself, isn't it? Subhanallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So she also made the respect available. She made the care. She mm-hmm. cares for my daughter. When I was not around, she do check on my daughter. She, some co-wife mm-hmm. would not even mind. The fact that they were just married to us, but that was what matters. She, I was not around. Mm-hmm. She, she, checked on, she checked on Mariam and all of that. She do, so what else? What else? What else? So I have So I was I was gonna ask you about that actually because um you know with regards to children. So your co-wife when she when she got married to your, your husband, um what did she did she was she coming from a pre did she have any previous marriages? Like does she have any like children before or is this her no, first no. marriage as well? No, it's her first marriage. She's like, she's okay, like, she's okay. Like, Okay, alhamdulillah. So, so what is the you mentioned? Obviously, that she does check your for your daughter and these kind of things. How is that relationship as well? Because your daughter's still very young as well, isn't it? Yeah, ah, alhamdulillah, it's so nice because there was an instance that even happened during Eid. There was um mm-hmm. um the uh, the last Eid, um, but Maryam went to her place. I was still in Malaysia then, so she Maryam went to she had to go. She had to have the heat with her dad so she will be with my co-wife obviously so when she got back home Miriam is just two years plus Miriam was telling her grandma that ah grandma call zara because and thank zara on my behalf she really took care of me when i was with her she's oh, just two years, and he's only two two years plus. that kids, they don't lie they don't lie Mm. Miriam is just two years old and some months as a day. And she, she told her mom, she should call Zara and thank Zara for taking care of her. Mm. So it was me knowing that it was so, so, I felt so happy. I, I was in Malaysia when I was told that this is what happened. That Miriam said this. I was so thankful to Allah. That, wow, what a blessing. Like, it's so good. And even, so between both of them, she loved her so, so much. She loves Zara so, so. And I definitely, it's because Zara is a good person to her. That's why. Let's mm-hmm. say she, she doesn't show her care. A child wouldn't fake love for you. That's one thing. Kids are so innocent. It is what you show yes. them. It's the energy you give them, they will give you back. When you give them a very good energy, they yes. return it back. Just even which mm-hmm. day was that, maybe just last week, I had her telling her dad that that because called Zara. She because I'm around for a break mm-hmm. presently. She told her dad to call mm-hmm. Zara. So the dad was he didn't he just kept quiet. So I was like, oh call call, call her now. She's asking you to call her, call her. So and and he placed the call and the both exchanged greetings and it went so well. So alhamdulillah. 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 That's that's good. So alhamdulillah. Nice and nice and positive, subhanAllah. So um, I think um to wrap up the interview, I wanted to ask you finally uh what do you think is important for men to understand when they think about polygyny? 
one thing it's difficult even for them it's a okay. it's, it's it's not easy it's easier to conceive the thoughts and but then don't just execute just be careful think about the pros think about the cons think about that do i can, can is it is it is, is it something that i can am i like one question you should firstly ask yourself as a man are you ready to trade your present happiness for an unknown outcome like let's say for instance you and your wife you're doing well and your kids everything is going on well and what if the ge- the genesis of your family becoming um an unhappy one is because of the decision to get because it will be very maybe problematic maybe the wives are not going to get along everything will just turn out to be bad or the first wife wouldn't never accept it you would so it's sometimes it's better for you to stay with just your happy family than you should go on with the decision knowing fully whether it will cause you maybe a lifetime problem so you have to think 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 and plan 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 and it's not it's not easy it's not easy because it's it's a double expenditure is a multiple expenditure for those that have multiple wives so that and it's it can be very very draining like it's with only the only thing that makes it difficult for we for we the first wife or something is just the emotional pain attached for the men both at some point today too they might be emotionally broken because let's say the husband loved that first wife very well and everything happened and she stopped dishing him with all what she's dishing him that is making him feel good and happy it will definitely affect him mm-hmm. he, it, no matter he might be manning it up and making it feel as if it's, it's a lie he's affected so that way you should be you should know what you are doing and you should know what you are trading it for you might not be willing to trade it for what you don't know the, what the outcome will be and if you know that yes hopefully the outcome will be good then still know that i promise you it wouldn't be easy it's a test that you really want to stand down for and you'll be tested in it by allah test will come for you and remember you were the one that made the decision that i want not that it was unwillingly you decided that this 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 first marriage is wajib for those that it is expected to be wajib for but subsequent marriage is not obligatory no meant you make it wajib yeah. for yourself by do, you have to fulfill everything as expected you have to be just the idea that said that on the day of on the day of resurrection a man that is not just will appear in such a way that i think half of his body will look horrible or something can you correct You're me lopsided or something like that yeah mm. yeah so when people even see him, they only do know what he has done. Like, oh, this person was not just with his wives and all of that and all of that. So, and that shows that it's going to be a very serious punishment. The punishment is going to be very, very severe. So you should think about it. Am I strong enough to do all it takes to make sure that I don't end the wrath of Allah? Am I, am I willing to like do all it takes? So you have to think about it very well and you have to be sincere with yourself. Forget about the um the pleasure and all of that pleasure of the dunya doesn't last we should all be sincere with ourselves the pleasure doesn't last it's more of the test the trials the hardship the tr- striving and all so it's not about just the sweetness of okay i have a new 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 companion it's it's beyond it it's far beyond this reality will set in you need to also you you be you have to also do the hard work to make the new marriage work and the existing marriage work it's not only the work of the woman even the man has a has a role a serious role to play in making sure that all the wives feel reassured that yes this marriage loves me and are you that man mm-hmm. that can really do that are you that man that that is willing to to go out of your way to make it obvious and assure all the old wives that um, yeah, I I do love you. So it's really not when it's not an easy task. So I I and it's not something that it's not meant for any everybody. Polygamy talk is not just what you conceive, conceive and just execute. Even when you have the resources, um, it's not all about can you satisfy them. Even when you, okay, if you can satisfy them, you some people can satisfy, but they don't have the resources. Some people can have the resources, but they can't satisfy. And some people do not even have the emotional intelligence. Some men um, are they can't undo more than one woman women are difficult to undo so so it takes a lot so i just hope they'll always be sincere before making that decision that's just that way whatever the outcome is if you are sincere and you've already weighed everything 
you will know that yeah, yeah, I tried my best. If Allah asks you that, did you try your best to do the right thing? You will be confident to some level and say, yeah, Allah, I did try my best. And we know Allah is merciful. He will forgive our shortcomings, bi'izdallah. But we have to strive. Yes, alhamdulillah, sister, subhanAllah. Okay, so, um, yeah, I wanted to ask something else about... um. Yeah, you were talking about love as well, actually, because sometimes people think like, oh, they think about polygyny as something that, you know, it's a relationship where love isn't existing, for example. And I think um, just not even not just polygyny pers- like specifically, but, um, you know, I've been living in Ghana for a while now. And I think that, you know, sometimes like as a Westerner, sometimes the way that, you know, the, my my view of how I see certain people going into marriages is like, they don't like i don't know how i don't know if this is true for people in nigeria obviously i'm not going to say that it's the same for everybody definitely people um feel love towards each other or sometimes there's not even love at the beginning of the marriage but you get into the marriage and then you the love grows for example but um you know i think sometimes you know here what i've seen the way that a lot of people go into marriages is like they just see somebody, they like the look of the person, so then they just kind of get married without really taking time to like go into finding out about the qualities of the person, what their interests are and these kinds of things. Because obviously these things are important when it comes down to like being compatible with somebody and building your life with them. So obviously w- with polygyny, there's going to be much more layers of that as well. And um, these are the things that once they are in sync, it can help love to gl- grow and flourish in a marriage. So, you know, I wanted to, to ask you a bit, because you've mentioned love a few times that, you know, you said you and your husband, you already have your own love story before the, you know, your co-wife came into the marriage and it was important for you to let her know that as well. So, you know, oh, can you talk a little bit about the love aspect? Because some people may think, you know, especially coming from a Western perspective or a culture where polygyny isn't practiced, they may think that, oh, you know, this is something for people who, you know, they don't know how to love really like another person. You know, it's like marriage becomes almost like something mechanical. Do you know what I mean? Like marriage is just there so that the women can have children or, you know, just for the man to look good or something like that. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to, to say? So yeah. if somebody, if somebody, for example, was to ask you, say, well, oh, you know, you must not love your husband that much because you allowed him to take another wife. You know, some oh, people oh, oh, have oh, this yeah. idea in their mind. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I mean. got the question. Okay, yeah. So love hmm. and polygamy is a very, very delicate one. It's very delicate and it's very difficult to even have it. That's a sincere thing I'll tell you. So, like, um, my coming from the monogamy part, we like normal as my husband and my wife there are good things like it's obvious we have good times and good memories together so coming to polygamy i told you in the beginning that when the issue of um polygamy comes out for a woman it is going to break almost everything that is there like in your heart you can feel as if i don't love this man again the, you too so it will be it will have to be rebuilt again like you know the problem we have is that we have issue with our orientation we like for me that we even came from a, a family whereby it's only our mom and our dad it's 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 it makes you see marriage as that only you define marriage as a relationship like a family is where there is mother and father and there is no co-wives you understand and even yes, the society, yes. the movie, the um, the storybooks, the all those things, the novels, they make you feel it, the only time you can have love is when there is a man and a woman within a family unit. Not when other parties. Love is only to be shared between two people only. Do you understand? And you can't. I can't. My yes. man, it, it is difficult to conceive that my husband loves me and he loves another person. It's difficult. It's mm-hmm. very difficult. Mm-hmm. But then. I could only since we have to be frank with whatsoever we are, we are saying in podcasts like this because it's help others out there. The only mm-hmm. time, because of the orientation that we all have, both of us have, we have to take ourselves back to our spirituality. That way, mm-hmm. you'll be able, as a woman, you'll be able to understand that a man has men, you, your own love can be limited as a woman. Love you can dish mm-hmm. to another man. The way Allah structure us has been limited. But for the main flux, just because of he likes you, that doesn't mean that he loves you. That means that he doesn't have many other love to share. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. just the truth. So, just, I, so the, I tried my best to internalize that understanding that, see, your husband still loves you. 
you're still who you're you're still as good as to him yeah you're still that good person he knows you to be you're still that lovely wife he knows you to be it's just a wish it's just something he wants to i uh, want to he wants to experience that's why he's going for another person so i had to like reorientate myself by myself to mm. be able to understand that it's possible you if you sincerely if you look at it from the lens of the normal way we live and what is being said in society you also feel that it is impossible because you are dealing with emotional <laughs> emotional like you are emotionally broken like and every the attachment so that way you will be able to love again and even better than before so the moment i made myself understood that society might define it this way society might make it looks as if it's not possible for your your your, your husband your legal husband to love you and still love his legal another legal wife of his that it's mm. not society no i i didn't take the society definition so i tried my best to reorientate myself and work towards like having it in a better way so it was the hard work cuz sincerely we are humans we don't want to be hurt like no one even the men flocks don't want to be hurt so when you feel hurt you just want to avoid that thing that is making you feel this miserable mm -hmm. so you just have to remember that me i have to remember that I don't want to enter Jahannam. Now, who's been learning? Share Dalik. I want to end a last mm -hmm. measure. And I knew that by leaving my parents' house, my Jana, my Miss Jana has been shifted from my mom to my spouse, my husband. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if I want to end a last pleasure, true, as far as I'm still married, I stay married with him. I need to be that good wife. I need to be that wife that my husband can say, "Yeah, Allah, I'm pleased with her." If I'm not mm -hmm. a loving wife, if I don't give him the love he wants, the what he deserves, and all of that, there is no way he can, he can, he can, he can clear me before Allah that I'm pleased with her. So because of this, it was what made it easy, very easier for me, like make it easier for me to like fall in love again and in a better way. Like you know, it was it was mm -hmm. a face, it was a test, and you just at that little, those moments. You just don't you just want to, don't want to have any, anything deep to do with someone that is causing you the terrible feelings you have the f terrible pain yes, you're feeling yes. and what even shocked me most was that imagine me as a person i didn't have anything against polygamy i didn't have anything against it i know and i could feel this excruciating pain like it was, I, i don't i don't i don't like calling it pain only i try to put excruciating before so that the person listening could know that it is not an easy thing so For me, that was even accepting. If I could be made to feel this kind of pain, what about the women out there that do not accept? So it's a very sensitive thing. It's a very difficult thing. May Allah just help us through. So at least through that, everything started becoming like how it was before. Like after uh, after this, those men that it was serious, that I was really really down. It it feels as if. Can I love this person? This person love another woman. Why not let me just dash my co-wife, my husband? That okay, you can have him out to him. I'm, I I'll just be in the marriage to take care of my children and just do what is necessary for him. But then, you no, know, I had to talk to myself that no, you can't do that because by doing that, you cannot be successful. You just need to still believe that your husband loves you, and you too, you mm -hmm. need to reciprocate. And you should just enjoy enjoy the marriage. You are, you are, you mm -hmm. you you deserve to be happy. So that way, and with it, sincerely, it is feasible. Uh, you can. It, that's just it. So I right now, it's it 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 is possible. Yes, she does it because if he doesn't love me, he wouldn't go out out of his way to be patient for me to heal properly, to to see that he's doing all his responsibility, to still try his best to reassure me that I'm not doing this to hurt. I'm, I didn't do this to intentionally hurt you. It just be it's just be a lot of structures that you will be hurt. You understand that kind of thing. So I think it's feasible, and I'm very sure my co-wife too. She's happy with her marriage, obviously. So everybody is fine. Be in the love. You ask a lot to make it easier to push through. Marriage is an act of ibadah, and when we consider it as such, it is easier to enjoy the muwadda and the rahma Allah has put between spouses. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, sister. Barakallahu feekum. I think, mashallah, you've given really comprehensive answers and a lot of things for people to think about, actually. Mashallah, Barakallah. So, inshallah, we'll um, end this interview. Um, do you have any final thoughts, sister? It's just that, whatever we do, 
we should always make Allah our priority and we should that way everything will make sense to us inshallah 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 barakallah fikum sister thank you so much for giving so much of your time today it's been a really um, really good interview, alhamdulillah. And inshallah, the sisters listening will benefit whether they're in polygyny already or thinking about going into polygyny or just curious about polygyny and how it is practiced in our times. Jazakallah khair, sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa antum fa jazakumullah khairan. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.